Okay, then hello. Uh, we are the Young Critics. I'm Steffi. Alyssa. Stefan. Sarah. Well. Um, we're going to talk about The Wibble in the Biscuit, written by John Foster, which is the story of uh, the married couple uh, Robert Louis Stevenson and Fanny Stevenson. And the story uh, revolves around the writing process for uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, we went, well, uh, we, we watched the performance twice, uh, some of us just once, some of us three times. And we're gonna compare the, the plays and, yes, give a, a little bit of a taste of what we thought about this play. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, do you want to start? Yeah, do, you want, do you want to start again for what you were talking about before? About the yes, artists? definitely. Yeah. Well, I don't remember what I was saying. What was I saying? Oh, you were saying about how uh, <coughs> you said it was and seemed like it was different in madness. Yeah. Okay, yeah. How his performance got more and more over. Yeah. It's just like an inside joke that the camera's not allowed to play about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I don't know what you, you think, guys, but. Um, yeah, I really liked the performances and I, I really I really felt the power of the play through it. However, I kind of felt that uh, from the part of, uh, mm, Mark, of Mark, for instance, yes, um, there was a bit of, um, of too much intensity into his performance throughout the plays. I watched it three times. Uh, I went first to the... Um, Natur Natural Science Society, then I went to Boscanova and then again at the Community Centre in Ferndown. And I re realised that the, um, the performance kind of uh, grew in intensity. And I, I kind of felt like Stevenson was portrayed like a mad man instead of a sick man. Uh, I really, I really mm, enjoyed and I really felt the emotion coming through uh, the performance of uh, Elaine. Mm. Mm -hmm. I thought uh, she could really, uh, she could really portray and mm, get get to the audience with her character in a really powerful way without overdoing it. That's how I felt. See, that's interesting. She said that um, Mark got more intense uh, as the performances went on, as yeah. the three performances went on, and I only saw the first one. So I thought it was about the right level, actually, of intensity, and I, that was something that really drew me in to the story. Um, whereas I don't know if it got to the point of, I don't know, over-exaggeration maybe, or yes, perhaps uh, just too much. Maybe he was a bit in the moment or something, I don't know. Maybe he was it the, the performance in front of the kids, where he, yes, maybe was, he wanted to um, yeah. be loud and a little bit, because maybe, you know how they talked about, like after each play they had the Q&A. And they talked about how much the audience actually plays a role in the yes. play. Maybe yes. they were influenced a lot by kids. Yes, well, I, I have to say that in the third play, he actually made an effort to make them laugh. So, of course, uh -huh. his performance was more intense mm -hmm. because of that. But still, if I compare <coughs> the two performances, the one at the Natural Science Society and the one at Boscanova, I could still feel like there was a sort of, if, like, the emotional level was growing. And the character was a bit going out from the, the role, like from what John Foster, from what I read in the, in the play, was trying to, you know, yeah, portray. Okay. Cause you've, okay. Okay. No, because you've read the play, I haven't read the play, so I, don't, I can't interpret that. But because um, the, second, the second performance was the one in the, in the smaller place, right? Yes. It was the intense lighting. Yes. Yeah. And I quite, I quite liked how mad he had suddenly. Um, become just because it's, it translates to the Jekyll and Hyde story. Mm -hmm. It's like two texts enter a yeah. few of each other, I don't know. But like because Jekyll and Hyde, um, because there's madness in that story, so he has that in his own writing style. Yeah. So I liked it, but um, I, don't, I haven't seen the third one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, I really liked the third one, but maybe I'm going to say it, something about it later. <laughs> Well, I thought that actually in the first performance, uh, Mark Freestone was, I agree with you that it was the right intensity, whereas I didn't think Elaine Harry was as good in the first one, so she was in the second. She got stronger, I thought, in the, 
the next night because in the first night her accent was a bit dodgy and um, she didn't seem to be as into the character as maybe he was. I thought he did really well, especially when when he had to go between his character Stevenson and Mr. Hyde, mm -hmm. like changing his voice and changing his. He did that really subtly and really well, I thought. Um, I really liked that as well. Yeah, and in the mm -hmm. second okay. performance, Elaine also like really picked up. I thought she, she, whereas in the first performance it seemed like it was her acting as Mrs. Stevenson, in the second performance it just seemed like Mrs. Stevenson. There was less um, sort of little moments where you could sort of see a sort of break character. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I actually have a different point of view from. I, I really like her acting of the actress. I, I like I liked it more than than the guy. I, I felt like it was she was acting quite natural and she was doing a really impressive job because I I was literally getting involved into her character when she was when she was acting so I, I liked her acting and yeah as well like the actors like in, in the part you were talking about he did really well that part and I think they're both valuable actors and um, so would you say you thought like you felt that she sort of dragged you into the story more than he did was, was, was that to do with the acting or was that to do with the director dress? Because I found that she talked to the audience as the character that we were meant to be, as we were meant to be guests to the house. Mm -hmm. I felt that she talks to us maybe, it felt like more than he did, I don't know if that's true. Or yeah, I yeah. Look down the script to see I, I if do. it is. Okay. But it, it felt like she was, she, obviously she was playing the hostess, whereas mm -hmm. he was doing more sort of the sides and mm -hmm. ideas. Yeah, probably, and yeah. yeah, so that's it, true. it felt like she was being more welcoming, mm -hmm. which is part of the character. Um, well, the only time we really, really asked the audience anything was he, when it was about the main thing, is it? Jekyll. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the only interaction you had. Yeah, well, sure. more. Yeah. well, at the beginning, he kind of uh, welcomes, not welcomes, he just kind of says some sentences after what after after she welcomes the, the, the guests. Yeah. So it's not really saying something to the audience, but still, in the script, you can. You, the, the, the playwright writes to the, to the audience next to the Louis Stevenson sentences, so it was meant to be but an interaction with the audience as well. Yeah. I see what you mean because she's more relatable and she's more she's a more heartwarming and normal human atmosphere and he was like can be can be as well eccentric. because of the plot yeah like can be because of the plot as well but I really liked her acting so mm. she was good. Yeah, I wouldn't say her character is like normal though. She's no, slightly crazy. More than him. <laughs> yeah, his. What do you his, find crazy though? Well, his crazy craziness was on the outside for everyone to see. It was him tossing, turning in bed, writing manically, whatever. Whereas hers was a lot more internal. Um, you could see her like reading her book very still, but like she, he wrote for five days straight or something like that, writing this play, during the whole time she sat there and read a book. That's kind of crazy, just to sit there and read a book mm. over and over for five days. She um, she wanted to make it, everything seem normal, like, hello, you know, he's a bit busy, but don't worry. And obviously we knew that there was more to it, so she was almost deluding herself mm. into thinking, which is why I do agree that she is a good actress, because she did put that across, I thought, mm, yeah. as a trickier skill to do than yeah. Showing external things, yeah. you can just run about, whatever. Mm. Whereas um, she could keep all the emotions inside and make us feel them. Yeah, yeah. I also felt that exactly, I, yeah. simplicity. Yeah. It's hard. I sort of pulled a parallel. Actually, as soon as I came out, I pulled a parallel between uh, Mr. and Mrs. Stevenson and, of course, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, like, yeah. I really, particularly with you could see that. the set and the way that the, the stage was divided. You had this sort of yes dichotomy thing going on. Yes, and. So she was Dr. Jekyll and he was Mr. Hyde in, in a lot of ways because she was putting on this, uh, I will say, in the external, yes, everything's that's, good. That's really, and yeah, yeah a good point. That was something I sort of thought. Yes. Of. Even the setting, I thought it was really interesting with this a line of books in yeah. the middle, which had a re really a lot of meaning to them, considering which play you were watching. The books divide them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, the contrast from one chair to a totally mess, crazy. Yes. And that, that chair, right. like, yeah. 
So I think that it was talking actually, I don't remember if the actor was talking about or actually the, the script writer. That it was actually talking his about... Chair? Sorry? His chair? Or yes, it, it, it was talking about the difference of the two env environment because it was actually supposed to be a contrast, a contrast between his craziness and his sort of, her sort of normal, like, fake normality where she was like in, in her own wor world where it was everything perfect and clean and order and trying to take you in the back in the old time like you know in the 700 or whatever instead it was something like a, an imaginary mm. really. credit, credit does have to go to Charmaine the director because the sort of theme or tone that was put in the script she managed to bring to life very well mm -hmm. like you said with the contrast between the two sides with the books in the middle. She really got that idea of um, normal versus crazy. She managed to show that and the books in the middle I especially liked because oh, yeah. there's even a line where he goes, she, I think she says it like, he writes, I read. Like mm. their mm. main difference is book related, literally re yes. related to yeah. literary. So that's quite um. clever. Also, of course, the, the, the climactic moment when he course falls over and knocks them all over. And well, it's, it's interesting because on the, you don't know this in the second one. Yeah. He does it at a different point. Oh really? Um, because so in the first one, mm. the director said that basically she was afraid that it looked like he accidentally hit hit them over, whereas I thought it was very intentional because it was mm. at a really good point. It was like a boiling point mm. where it was almost breaking down their relationship, breaking down those walls. Yeah. Um, whereas in the second one, he did it a bit later on and like yes. had to jump at them rather than fall on them, and it didn't work as well. I don't think in the second one, yeah. it wasn't as powerful a moment. Mm -hmm. He didn't manage to crash onto them yeah. directly, so yeah. But it is the, the difference in chairs is interesting because hers like very contained Victorian phobia, yes. normal, elegant chair. And his is this absurd. It's just sort of cocoon. Yes, know. with the I asked about after the second performance, I asked who did this and it was supposed to be. They were like, yeah, it's kind of a, a garden seat and we put some yes. stuff on it. And then the stuff um, at the top it, yeah. is like it's supposed to be it's like little um, mirrors with little mirrors with and feathers. Stuff, and it's supposed to be his nightmares. Yes. So it was really nice. I thought it was interesting how much that resembled a child's bed. Well, like some kind of crib or something because it, it had it looked like a mobile. Like, that was my first thing when I saw it. I thought like, that was like a mobile. And of course he was curled up in it a lot of times. Yeah. So. That was sort of the Well, uh, in the third in the third location was like for children. So they, they just did everything that was done in the in the other two. But uh, let's say that the actors tried to involve the children more uh -huh. on, you know, making a bit making funny faces and the children really laughed when the boo like when uh, Stevenson drank from the from boo how's it called boogie boogie's uh, yeah bowl they were just laughing mm. and I did find it weird they had yeah. boogie the dog in it but like, I didn't really see why why yeah because it starts with him barking yeah. you totally and it just goes him into during the play I totally yeah, forgot him during the play. Yeah, yeah it, doesn't the happen, it doesn't happen anymore. It's just the no. beginning, doesn't it? Yes. He served no purpose. It served no purpose in the play. Yeah, right. and like, if you took it out, it would still have the exact same effect. Mm -hmm. Everything would be the same. It's almost as if they put it in there just to show that, like, to put in early that this play involves multi roller um, Yes. It's like they wanted to make that clear straight away that it's not just a straight play with two characters. Yeah. There's going to be, like, well, if I, <laughs> yeah, I would say that uh, thinking of John Foster's fire, uh, style, uh, yeah, thinking about John Foster's style and the way he ten, he he writes and he t he portrays situations, it, it, I could compare it like to a I don't know a painting from Monk. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Like it just the emotion just comes off. But you need to focus to understand what really is behind the words because mm -hmm. he kind of he talks about something, but it's not really that something we are talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what, what is actually really interesting about the plot that he, you actually clarified me at the moment we were talking about the the plot actually is that at the beginning when when I was like actually thinking in terms of 
a normal script where you actually see a beginning, a middle and an end of a movie. There should be a sort of... Yeah, I know, I know that this kind of things that he was writing, at one point it was like the goal of the script writer, of the guy, of the crazy writer. Yeah, Stevens. Yeah, of, yeah, of Stevens. But then I didn't really understand what was the goal, what was the achievement of... At the end of the play? Yeah, of, of the play. Like at the, end, at the beginning I couldn't get it why, but then I was talking to, to Steffi, but this is actually a piece of art because it's totally different from what we think of a normal story or, or normal plot. It goes behind, it goes, it goes behind of the normal typical story and I, I found it quite interesting. Yes. Because it, it, made, it made me think more, because it's something odd that goes out of the norm, normality, the, mm -hmm. the normal. But also the rhythm in the play, I don't know if you picked up on it, it's really like snappy and mm. so short sentences full of meaning. Yeah. And it just shocks you. I mean, I, I was like, most of the times I get shocked by what I, I listen to, because first of all, I, maybe in the, first time, in, the, in the first place, I don't understand exactly what it is. But then it hits me after two seconds and I'm like, oh my god. I think also another part of it was the pacing was actually really good. I sort of, yes. as it was get coming towards the end, I'm thinking in my head, you know, it's, it's going to end now, then it's going to end, and then it did. And I was like, wow, that, that was sort of exactly... So that's interesting because the first time watching I was really surprised by the abrupt ending. Really? Yeah. I was, I was oh, completely that's, expecting that's it. That's the ending. <laughs> <laughs> and because I... she doesn't come in anymore. She's like gone through the long yeah, and he has a long ending monologue. Yeah, I had, I, did, I had the same impression yeah. because like at one point I was waiting for her to come back. And I was like, <laughs> when, when is she coming back? And I was like, and then he finished. I was like, she she's, has been waiting like there for like at least 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just That's waiting. Why I was so I thought, I thought <laughs> she would have to last her out. And, but, and she didn't go out from the roof. She just sat there on the corner and just wait. Mm. So but that, that was quite interesting. Because yes. the, the play for me was like, obviously it's about the different difficulties in writing something mm. and stuff like that, but um, like, for example, because she is like his number one critic of his mm -hmm. work and they have this codependent relationship yes. and she criticizes maybe his work for the first time. I don't know. Yeah, she, she felt really like hates it. What should you call it? Vomitable. She finds yes, it vomitable. she said that. So, <laughs> nice word. Um, <laughs> And then I liked how he like completely goes crazy because she says that and he throws everything over. And for me, the ending was like that it kind of came full circle. He's exactly where he is at the beginning. He has to write it again. She has to mm -hmm. write it again. They kind of go mm -hmm. in, in the a loop. Yes. yes. It's the idea like of like a transcendental narrative yeah, it's where right, yeah. nothing happens the whole way through. You know, the play starts about a couple in a house, it ends, the couple's still in the house, yeah. nothing's changed, all that's happened is the audience's understanding of those characters has changed, that's it. Mm. Um, and that, it's that more of a spiritual that's like understanding. It's a really good way to do it. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, don't say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what do you guys think about the differences between the first and, and the second act? And also um, a location, or just no, the other thing. Um, both, both, because we're not act like the first, the first <laughs> yeah. play and the um, second play. Also, can you tell me sort of was there any differences in the set or the lighting or any of that kind of thing? Well, is any of that different? Yes. Well, the thing is that you mean in in the between the locations, all of them. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Or well, I think, yeah, yeah. I think yes, there was a lot of difference because first of all, in the the first location at the National Science Society was kind of a really large space with mm. bigger lights. Whereas uh, at Boscanova, they had a really tiny room and the lights were much more intense in a much more tiny place. Mm. So they were like shocked with lights. Was there um, sort of less light on the audience then? Oh, yes. Yeah, we were in yeah. the dark. It was really like, um, how do you call it, hard light? Like really yeah. focused, like... Uh. I can imagine that would have been light and the other was much softer. They were, the, yeah. the actors were were sweating. Did all that the time. make did that make it sort of more intense? Yes. Yeah. Part of part of the thing. Yeah. It was in a it was in a black box room. Yeah. Which I assume you know. Yeah. Um, and because mm -hmm. you were also raised, uh, we were sat like above, oh. kind of looking down, weren't we? Um, which I thought took you out of it a bit. Yes. Yeah, so Even though it was a smaller place, that you were closer to it, you weren't actually like. In the space. In it as much. And also, like, 
no one replied to them in that performance, no one like got involved. So in the first performance, even though it was a bigger area, I felt more like I was in that house um, than in the second one where I was just watching it. And the, the wall seemed there more in the second one than in the first one. Yeah, be, because you felt more like in a theater and you, 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 seen, you, you noticed more the, the distance between the, like the actors and you that was just... And yeah, because the because audience was in the dark in the second one and in the first one everybody, everything was light and bright. Yeah, the second one definitely seemed more of a play, whereas the first one we were just in a room and they were just the ones talking. Like, we were just there <laughs> with them. Um, whereas in the second one, like, that's what a play is. It's you behind the audience, behind the lights. Like, so, like actors don't see you. They're just in that bubble. That's their world. That's where the play's happening. And you're just you, taking a look into that bubble. Yeah, I think that uh, from the audience point of view, uh, even the reactions are really different. Because in the first, I don't know if you remember, in the first uh, performance, there, there there was a person who reacted mm -hmm. to the questions, whereas in the second, in the second one, no. nobody said anything. Yeah, but even like uh, even us, I think at one point, like for example, me, I was was involved. Like I, I wanted to answer. Like it was, uh, oh, the end of it was actually talking to us or not. Even not, I heard other people at the end of the of the of the play that they had the same kind of thoughts. Yes. I, yeah, so right. which did you prefer in terms of all the writing and the way that it was set? Did you prefer being distant from the actors or did you prefer? I like the first on the first one on yes. the level and yes, the lights. Definitely. Well, uh, oh. I like it's interesting, I like the performance of the first play better. But concerning me, I like being not involved and not <laughs> being talked to in the play. I like being in the dark. Because I get very nervous if somebody <laughs> arrests me. And so <laughs> that's why I like the second one better for like, seating. But mm. the performance of the first one was more my kind of thing. I like the second one as well because I I kind of like to be in a theatre. Like to feel more in a theatre and watching a play. I know that I was feeling more involved in the first one, but I don't mind like to be like to feel Maybe like you were more involved though because it's because you saw it for the first time. Yeah, so I I mean, I maybe about, I was even closer because like, we were in the, fir in the first time mm -hmm. instead in the last one, in the second one, we were way on the back, farther on the back. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about the title? The title? Well, I kind of, uh, I liked it because I, it was like, it's really, it's really difficult to understand what's, what's this about from the title. Yeah. Could be a kid's tale, could be anything really. So what do you think? Well, uh, f when we watched the first time, I was after I was like, what was the title again? And why? Because I missed him saying that. Mm -hmm. And in the second performance, I actually lis I listen I listen closely when he's gonna um, say it, and then I spotted the moment. I was like, does it really have? I mean, it's not it's not like it's a standout sentence of the play. Mm -hmm. It's just a little thing he mentions. But I can It's just it's a weird thing. It doesn't make yeah. any sense, does it? A weevil in a biscuit. Uh, I don't know. I think it feels like uh, like when the writer has all these thoughts in his mind, and there is this thing that keeps you know mm. everything together. Yeah, no, it keeps irritating you, and if you don't get it get it out, it's gonna eat the biscuit, which is you. Oh, That's okay. how I felt it worked. Interesting. Oh, so For me, it was the title as absurd as Clockwork Orange. Oh, okay. I, I thought see. it would put some translator's madness or something. <laughs> Because when he says it in the play, it's, if, if I remember, I could be wrong. It's during the monologue where he's talking about how his uncle or his dad like put them there and they're stuck there. And when he says that we want a biscuit, he's referring to his situation. Like they are a weevil in the biscuit. Mm -hmm. Like they're stuck in there or whatever. They're stuck in like this little. Because it makes sense. He, the actor says the weevil brought me this play. The this the, the weevil brought me this tale, or this mm -hmm. yes. So uh, for for me it was like it was just I don't know a thought or something that is not really uh, within himself that came into his, in himself and and made him do it. I don't know if this if this makes sense. Like like if there was a an outer power which came inside his in his mind and like creativity let's call it like that and he made it just made him 
feel crazy and he had to write with this play because of this sorry this has to get it out too. yeah okay and can you tell us your point of view about the third play yes um, yeah it was um, I could say it was really it, it's been a really great ex performance but not only because of the actors but also because of the audience in that situation because it was at a community centre, so the audience was made of like mainly kids uh, from three to until thirteen, let's say, mm -hmm. and they they managed that they they really followed the play, so they managed to you know keep their attention, and they were, were even asking like answering the questions from the actors like uh, do you think Jekyll or Jekyll, like. And kids would just, you know, give the, give the answer. Mm. And also, uh, yeah, the, the power of the play and the, thing, the level of emotion really struck them, especially at the point when um, Stevenson kills the, ba the baby. At that point, there were Pretty people... Mad. Yes, <laughs> there were people in the audience among the adults as well, just turning their heads. Mm. So they I, were really shocked. I can imagine it really changes the energy of the play as well, because, I mean, when I saw it the first one, yeah. the audience was mostly sort of middle-aged people, yes. um, it was quite tense really, even though, like you say, we were in the light, we were more on the level, we were more involved, it was still sort of, felt like everybody could sort of hear people's brains ticking and yes. taking it in, and people weren't responding a little bit, but maybe mm -hmm. not yeah. so much, so I'm sure that sort of changed the tension and the energy to yes. different things. Um, well, I think uh, in the third uh, performance, we were all much more involved. Mm. In, in everything, so yeah, it was as I said before, there was much more emotion coming out of, of the actors and the performance itself. So I'd say that the more like uh, dark, the darkest part of the play, were kind of twisted in a much funnier way. Like, for example, uh, I don't know when when Jekyll turn, uh, sorry, when uh, Doctor Jekyll turns in Hyde. It becomes like more of a puppet instead of a ghost. So, so did you think it was it? It changed the it changed. Tone? Yes, it, it kind of changed yeah. the tone a little bit. Did it make it lighter? Yes, funnier? a bit lighter yeah. and finer and funnier, but still the dark parts yeah. were still there <laughs> with the killing of the baby, which was a bit. Yeah, I just I I, I looked at the audience at that point in the, in the play. Oops. <laughs> Yeah, I looked at the audience at that point in the play just to see their reaction, and they were shocked, especially the, the mothers. Yeah. <laughs> did they have a Q&A afterwards as well? Yes, they did. Was there an interesting question? Did the children understand? Uh, well, the, the children oh, yeah. didn't really ask questions at that point. Oh, okay. but <laughs> they were shocked. Yes. <laughs> but and that's low the way. Yes, I guess the thing that shocked, that shocked the most the audience is that... that the, the, the questions that have been asked by the actors, that, that kind of shocks them, I found. I did like that they always added the Q&A after. Yes. Because, um, yeah. again, it's like, the show's over, and it, it, in like normal plays, the show's over, and like you don't see the actors, they go, and that's like the end of the play, whereas this, it was like, they're still there, they become themselves, they're normal people, it, again, takes away that thing of, you see the that's you're watching the play. Yes. You see the transformation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, and obviously, it's always nice to ask questions and find out more about their processes and stuff about how they act. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, find that really good. Sorry. Go, go for it. I am. Um, I sort of. I felt that it was almost like a part of the play because it was because it was a one act play. It felt like it was the second act, in a, in a way, um, and that that sort of added to the experience that going to see it was yes. giving and. Also, because it was a one-act play, obviously, it, the tension did get quite high because it was just there was no break, there was no yes. sort of stop to let the audience think about it, and then sort of we did, and we were asking questions, and it sort of it must have enriched the whole experience, really. Yes, definitely. It was like um, I don't know. I think that uh, John, with this uh, with this mode of including the audience in the play, really um, like breaks the barrier that normally happens in a with like with painting for example when you have when you have the painting and the the the, the, the viewer and there is like the transition between the two is really hard and including the audience allows people to 
Thank you very much for listening to us and we hope uh, to have you there listening next time. And this is The Young Critics. Woohoo! Bye! Bye! <laughs>